What happened? What was it made her do this? She hit her line in the sand. We all have them. We all have trigger points. We all have those things that will make us go more than anything else. She knew this book was gonna hurt her and she knew she couldn't beat it until it threatened her dog. And then all bets were off. There's no saying in the combat world. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do beastly things. But what happens in a situation where it's not you that's being beastly, it's an actual beast. Let's find out who wins in Man vs. Nature in this week's Reality Check. Oh my God! Back up. One baby bear. Baby, baby, baby. baby come! Oh. No! This video actually came into my feed uh, the other day and it was one that I thought had such a fascinating insight into some of the realities of combat, it was well worth doing a reality check on. As you can see from it, we got a woman who's on a driveway and all of a sudden, without warning, boom, big rack of buck lands there. For those of you that don't know and think of deers as Bambi and little fawns and scampering in the woods, you get a buck with a full rack of horns on there, that is a handful for you. That is one dangerous animal, certainly not one to be tangled with. What's interesting in this video is you'll notice straight away she knows this. This is an experienced woman. She's got a branded gear hat going on there. I'm pretty sure she's put a few rounds down the range. She knows this book is not to be messed with. And you hear the voice, stay still, move away, back it off. This is actually one of the great truths of nature. Generally speaking, most animals out there don't want to fight you. Even the more aggressive ones will tend to avoid confrontation because in their nature, their confrontation is reserved for prey. If they start fighting and get injured in that fight, they might walk away from the fight, but they won't be able to hunt and they won't be able to survive for the rest of the season. If only humans were this smart. In this situation, she's backing off. She knows this is not a fight she's ever going to win. And she knows this is one dangerous animal in front of her. And then the little dog gets involved and the little dog decides he's going to defend his pack. It's at this point that the woman decides, don't you hurt my dog. And she screams and attacks the book and everything goes south from here on in. The book attacks her, the book goes her. It's actually quite bad from what the medical reports are saying afterwards. And this is one of those situations which is now potentially fatal. This is a life and death situation. She's being gored and attacked by a wild animal. Thankfully, thankfully, there was someone else there that had experience in the wherewithal to grab that buck by the rack and lead it away. What happened? What was it made her do this? She hit her line in the sand. We all have them. We all have trigger points. We all have those things that'll make us go more than anything else. She knew this book was gonna hurt her and she knew she couldn't beat it until it threatened her dog. And then all bets were off. The emotion kicked in, the fight off, flight response went straight from fight, flight rather than right into fight, and then it was going on. How many times do we see those situations arise in the bar, on the street, in household settings? Someone hits the wrong button, they say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and every single rational thought process goes out the window, and they swing punches, they engage, they grab bats, they grab knives, they grab anything lying around, and they lash out at things. We are not beasts, guys. Despite the marketing hype, despite the t-shirt slogans that you see people carrying around, we're a higher evolved species than that. And it's about time we started acting like it. If you know what your line in the sand is, good for you. But if it's a line in the sand that doesn't need to be one, you may need to rethink some of your strategies and processes. 
When emotion overrules, we react. When we can keep our emotion in check, we respond. One of these, we don't have control over. One of them, we do. And only one of these will lead us to doing correct courses of action in high adrenaline situations when it is fight or flight. Do I need to punch that guy because he doesn't like my sports team? Does he not like the same professional wrestler that I like? Does he think that Hulk Hogan shouldn't have gone, sort of beat the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6? Who knows? It's still not worth arguing over. But we do. We do it constantly because we fight for our ego. Most fights come from three places, security, control, and approval. And that's what causes the issues for us. If we can stay out of those territories, and if we can keep our responses as emotional free as we can, even in high stress situations, our responses are gonna be the correct responses, or at least considered responses that we can explain. And we can prevent someone dying from our hands, and we can prevent ourselves dying at their hands. This has gotta be a good thing, guys. As I said in the road rage one, we're better than this. And that's my challenge to you. Be better. That's all for this week, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Slightly different one. If you'd like to see more Man vs. Beast videos, please do send them in to us. As always, like, subscribe, and share. You can find me on Twitter at Aftermathmatic, Facebook, Aftermath the Fight After the Fight, and my new YouTube channel, Aftermath the Fight After the Fight. Any subs you can throw that way would be greatly appreciated. It all helps us produce this content and share it out with you. And as always, please, please go to my brother's site, The Budo Brothers. They got the best gear out there. It will last you a lifetime. It will serve your training needs. And when you're training with a good gear, it means you're training well. When you're training well, you get your emotions under control and you won't start fist fights with bucks. I'll see you next time.